Good day folks. Today I'm going to break down the Black Mamba vs. Human video. Lots of people have requested that I talk about it. Um, lots of people even get a bit angry about it, saying it's, uh, it's a, a bad example. It's quite a complicated uh, topic and it takes many years to get the confidence level and to understand these animals enough to be able to do what I do with them. Um, so I will go through the video and, we'll, and I'll talk about exactly what happens and where and how I can read the animal's behavior. So we'll start here where I find the black mamba out basking on top of the, the, this mound. And the first thing I do is I grab the tail. And now I've got a gauge. Depending on the length of the snake, I know the snake can turn around very quickly. Black mambas are famous for being incredibly fast and agile. The snake is in shed as well, so you'll see his eyes are a bit blue. It makes the snake a little bit more aggressive sometimes because they obviously can't really see as well. And they do have quite good eyesight, the black mambas. So all I'm doing here is I'm gauging. So almost like a mongoose dancing around uh, a snake, also trying to gauge the range. It's a similar thing that I'm doing here now. So I know roughly the, the, by estimating the lengths, by working with so many of these snakes, I can estimate exactly what the strike range is of the animal. And that's why I can move so nicely around it. To the viewer, it looks like it's incredibly dangerous. But to me, it's calculated risk. I see exactly what's going on. So the first part of this is all trying to gauge the snake's movement. See what kind of snake it is. Because remember, even though it's a black mamba, each black mamba in the species have a different personality. Just like humans have different personalities, animals have different personalities. And there's no difference even with the primitive animals like snakes. So I'm trying to gauge and work out what exactly the, 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 the attitude of the snake is. Is it a one that wants to keep moving away? Is it one that stands his ground? You can see now he's standing his ground now. Now he's happy, he's looking me in the eye. What I want to do next is I want to get my hand close. I want to move my hand in range to see what is it. You know, see, I touch him and he's not happy. Opening the mouth. When they open that mouth, that's a clear indicator that the snake's obviously nervous. It's a, it's a warning. It's quite a lethal warning because uh, if you've ever experienced that a black mama opening that mouth and showing you the inky black mouth inside, is intimidating for most animals on the planet and obviously black mambas pack incredibly powerful neurotoxic venom so a bite from a black mamba can kill animals the size of lions so you got to be careful to always stay just outside of that strike range and you'll see if you look very closely i'm always just outside of the range so to the view on film it looks like uh, it's i'm in the range but i can jump up in a split second and move away and i'm continuously judging this animal and because of all these years of working with them I can analyze it better than the average person would. And that's why if you do not have the knowledge of free handling, it is obviously never recommended. But this is the ultimate way to connect with a primitive animal. And uh, it takes years of commitment and understanding of snakes movement. Uh, the same as a guy that walks into a camp with lions or even if you guys have worked with elephants, it's all the same. It's body language is very important. Us humans use language to communicate. Most other animals use their body language. And because we focus so much on language, we've lost our capability to read body language. And this is the ultimate art form of reading body language is something like a snake who doesn't have eyes. So now you see, I'm gonna try and get closer to Trump just to see if I can get him to focus on me again. He's trying to move off. See, actually gentle. Even though it's an aggressive, or known as an aggressive snake, they're actually not as bad as people think they are. If they're cornered, then yes. But if you leave them out in the open, they'll always try and move away. Okay, so I'm going to skip forward a bit here yeah? to where now the snake is fully focused on me. All of his attention is on me now. So now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get my get him to focus on me 100%. So now when I have the snake by the tail like this and I'm pulling him back, I've got to be really focused because the snake is going to try and turn around. So my main aim here is to try and put my hand on the back of the snake to show that even the most deadly animal like this, if you do the systematic movement just right, you go through the paces. So look, here, here comes the first attempt. I touch him and you see that's a nervous reaction. That touch on the back of the head was a nervous reaction. He's not quite ready. So systematically, you've got to be really patient. I'm going through the paces. I'm in the safe range. I've, I've worked out the range that he likes to strike. The snake sees me as a predator, he thinks I might want to eat him, but with patience and gentle approach, the snake will start to settle down, which is what's happening currently now, he's starting to relax. So 
So now he's got still focused on me. You see he's now he's defending his tail. He's rolled himself up. He's now in full defense. He's abandoned the idea of moving off. Now it's just display and show those, that inky black mouth. And they've got very forward-facing fangs. So all he needs to do is just touch you and he would inject uh, the venom. Even though snakes control the amount of venom they inject and they don't always inject venom, the black mamba is famous for loving to inject quite large quantities when they buy it. So I'm aware of all of this. But still my movement is in a safe range, even though to the viewer it looks like it's incredibly dangerous and that I almost got a hit there, it's all very calculated and uh, I was actually never even close to getting struck that day or being hit. So now you see, now I'm starting to be able to strike him on the body. This is a crucial point now. This way I can strike him like that and he takes it. Now he's still a little bit alert, but slowly but surely you can see I'm starting to win over his respect and he's starting to settle down with my movements now a lot more. Just keeping his eye on me, just focused on me. It's a magnificent moment. Uh, it's almost like in your brain, you enter an ancient trance-like state. Um, it, is, uh, it is almost unexplainable, but the focus for me and the snake is incredible. We both enter a realm of deep level of focus that I've never achieved in doing any other activity but something like this. We are both connected there, even though there's millions of years of evolution between us, in that point in time, there's a deep-rooted ancient connection, and we both feel it. I'm actually exhausted after doing a scene like this. I'm going to move a little bit forward to the second stage where I get my... You'll see I'll get my hand on the back of his head again. I'm just waiting. You know, the crucial key is to be patient and to treat them as an individual and not as a particular species. And I'm slowly putting in data on my head and feeling the snake. And still making a bit of hood, you see that, oh, not ready for me to touch him yet. Still a bit upset. Still warning me. So I'm going to skip a bit forward. Now I approach with a more gentle, I'm now lying next to him. He's relaxed, he sees that, oh, well, geez, this guy has been hanging around here for long. He hasn't actually physically hurt me. And all my movements have been quite gentle. So let's just see now. He's still very alert. Now you can see, this is now a big change. I'm actually able to pick him up. I'm just getting there. He's still not 100%. Uh, he's not trusting me 100%. I've got to continuously read the animal the whole time while presenting and talking about it. There we go. That mid-body grab is a big indication for me. Now he's starting to settle. You can see that I'm picking him up. He doesn't seem to be too freaked out by it. That is uh, still, still dangerous stuff. I'll try it again. And you can see he wants to move away now. Now he's moving fast. He sees a window of opportunity to move away. And I'll do it again. And that was a big moment for me to be able to pick up a black mamba like this. Not something you want to do every day. There's obviously a level of risk involved in it. But just that snake to allow me to do this and uh, hang it over my neck like that. But still, constantly have to be aware. You've got to remember the snake packs a tremendously potent neurotoxic venom. Um, which obviously, if you had to bite me, I would be in serious trouble. And here comes the moment now. After that handle, holding him like that, and all this effort and timing and, and uh, risk in some way that I put in now all comes together here. For that snake to allow me to do that was, uh, was a magical moment for me. Um, one of my long life dreams to be, I always knew you can do it, but I knew I had to put in the years to be able to do it. And look at, now he's taking a scratch. It's unbelievable. He's not making a hood. He's not showing his mouth. He's now completely settled. Just taking a scratch. It was, uh, it was remarkable. And then, um, just to think that something that's so primitive, you can work out in such steps and learn that body language so well that you can actually pull something like this off was remarkable. I couldn't believe it. I was shocked myself. I didn't think I was going to get to this level where I can come sit right next to him. The snake completely relaxed. It just shows you that nothing is really aggressive, truly. It's all defensive. And our, as humans, our problem is obviously fear. We fear everything. And so with knowledge, we can abolish fear. And this is uh, exactly the reason I do this, is to show people that all these deadliest creatures, and I've saved thousands of animals over the years, this way I can really show people how magical they are. And um, yes, I can come in with a snake hook or a, a stick to come and catch it, so, but I wanted to show that 
even as a modern man, I can link in such a primitive ancient way with an animal that's not even in the same evolutionary tree as me, but yet we can connect so magnificently. And that snake's now completely relaxed. What I'm going to try and do now is I'm going to try and um, show that, uh, that if you use a stick, um, gently touch him, you'll see, stroking him again, magnificent, I, I cannot believe it. So uh, what I wanted to do then is demonstrate now that if you use a foreign matter now and bring it into the scenario, the snake is not crazy about it, like instantly angry again. Put the stick down, he showed me his mouth. And then instantly, I can already see, I can feel the energy, I can feel the trust. Right there and then I can go back in again and look at this. Magnificently, he's right back to being gentle again. It's mind-blowing that you can connect like this. Look at that. That is a trance moment. And just gently rubbing him like that. And we believe, look, this is the ultimate commitment. To let that snake go between my legs like that at any moment he can bite me. Uh, was, it was literally a dream come true. And this is what my destiny on this planet is. To show that all these animals, from the creepiest to the most beautiful, they all have a role to play. And even though the black mamba is one of the most feared animals on this planet, if you approach it in the right way systematically and you understand the behavior and you put in the effort, and it's actually a magnificently beautiful animal. And I love all of them and I would never harm any creature. And that capability of being able to read their behavior only comes after many years of working with them. And the first time when I was a young child, I would never go and pick up a black mama. Even though I loved snakes, I knew when that snake stood up tall and may open its mouth, it just generates the fear. But after all these years of working with so many of these most dangerous animals, I've worked out a formula. I've never been bitten by any of these snakes. And I've worked with almost all of the snakes, many snake parks and, in, and on game reserves. So if you understand the movement, you understand the behavior, and you understand the character within the species, then you can safely handle even the most deadliest animals without having to use any equipment. Just an ancient connection, which we as humans have lost. We've lost the way to connect through body language. So because of language, I feel we have neglected one of the most primitive and most important things, and that is body language. And that's what it all comes down to. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll be breaking down some other videos as time goes on. Cheers.